The Browns suck. The Ravens suck. The Bengals suck. Are we ready for the Steelers bye week? Oh, shit. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, goodness. G'day guys, welcome back to Steelers Nation Australia. You just saw me almost take out my camera and spill my coffee everywhere uh, as I threw my football, and that's staying in. But this is the AFC North Rundown Week 6. And before we get started, can we just be very thankful that the Steelers do have a bye and they are leading the division? That's something we should all be happy about, right? Look, can the fire stuff for now? Just I know you guys want to, you really, really do. Just can it, man. Do we need to talk about Canada, Tomlin, Austin, all this stuff? We have a bye week. Let's like get our collective powers uh, with our powers combined, right? With our powers combined and just cheer on the Ravens to lose, the Browns to lose, and the Bengals to lose. If all three AFC North teams lose this week, which they can, by the way, if they all lose this week, the Steelers will hold their AFC North uh, first place uh, in the division, and we'll go into the week with the Rams game to extend it even further, right? That's what we need to cheer for. Cheer for the Ravens to lose. It's Ravens versus Titans. It's Bengals versus Seahawks and 49ers versus the Browns. But before we do that, if I do it right, if I put it here in one, two, three, go, that's going to be the AFC North standings, right? Let's look at that. So with the AFC North standings, the Steelers are in first place. Uh, Steelers are three and two. Ravens are three and two. Cleveland Browns are two and two. Cincinnati Bengals are two and three, right? Now, the thing is, though, the Steelers have uh, two and over their division already. Two and over their division. The Ravens have two and one. Browns are one and two. And the Bengals are zero and two in their division, right? But the one big thing I think out of this is, is yes, the Steelers are, are leading in first place. 2-0 and is fantastic in your division. You have to win your divisional games. We need that. But the funny thing is, is the Steelers are minus 31 in points. So we know that needs to change. We know that the offense needs to get better. they got to they got to run the rock better. We've been talking about this for months, years. We know this. We know what needs to get better, right? But there are some good positives. I see some positives uh, with Jalen Warren. I see some positives with uh, Darnell played a good game. Broderick Jones played a really good, good game last week. I see positive even with Kenny Pickett. The first half wasn't the best, but as he went on and on, and we saw that 41-yard pass, it was fantastic to see. So I see some good positives from this team. And like Kenny Pickett is like, like 10, 10 and 4 in his last 14 games. So he's got a winning record in that. And he's still into his rookie, you know, I guess rookie season of games, like 17 games now into year two. We do need a bit of a step, but I think every week he's getting better or he's trying to get back to where he was last year. Uh, at, the, at, at the end of the year. And also, last year after the bye, we were 2-6, and six, and they went on to win like 7-2 and two games. Like, we were on a fantastic run. So hopefully something can happen there. So Steelers are 3-2, and two, Ravens 3-2, and two, and Browns 2-2, two and two, and the Bengals 2-3, and three, right? They're all the AFC North uh, standings, and we're in front. The Steelers are in front. Let's go to the games, right? The games we want to cover today, if I can find my little sheet here, uh, we have, first of all, we have Tennessee... Well, Baltimore at Tennessee, right? Right there. I don't know where it is. <laughs> right there, I think. All right, Baltimore at Tennessee. However, it's not in Tennessee. It's in London. It's in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London. So Baltimore's traveling overseas uh, to London in the UK. So is, so is Titans as well. So this game to me is really 50-50, right? But I did look at um, uh, the Ravens and, and also... Well, the, the more or less the, the, the Titans schedule, okay? So the Titans schedule we had, they've beaten LA 27-24. They've beaten the Bengals 27-3. But they've lost, they've lost to the, the, the Browns 27-3. And they've lost to the, the New Orleans Saints and, and the, the Colts, right? Bit of a mismatch team. They're 2-3. and three. They try and run Derrick Henry. He's getting like 3.4 yards per carry. A few TDs. Uh, they, they use, I think, um, uh, Hopkins quite a bit. They have uh, Jackson, Smith, and Jimbo too. He's trying to get some reps there. But Derek Henry's got 86 yards. Uh, sorry, 86 carries, 328 yards. Three, sorry, 3.8, two TDs. Ryan Tannehill hasn't had the best season so far. Two TDs, five interceptions, and been sacked 17 times, right? So they've been in their own way quite a bit. But to me, this is like a 50-50 game because they're going over to London. 
And we all saw what happened last week with the Ravens and the drops and Lamar Jackson was playing. He was playing some good football, but there was a lot of drops, right? So let's get to our predictions. And also, guys, if you want to say your predictions in the chat, let us know. Do the Ravens game, uh, Browns game, and the Bengals game. I'm going losses in all three, but there's a reason why. Because if, if, if they get all three, you go with the heart. And next minute, the Steelers escape this by by still leading, by leading the AFC North after the bye, which would be fantastic. In this game, uh, Ravens versus Titans. Here, let's go. Titans win overseas in, in the UK, in London. In London. That's from friends, by the way. Um, let's go 27, 27, 24, 27, 24. The Titans win by a field goal right near the end. 27-24, right? Now, the next game. This one's fun. This one's really fun. We have the San Francisco 49ers versus the Cleveland Browns. Now, I do want to bring something up that I've been looking at a few times uh, over the over the uh, Twitter and over the internet and over the news, right? There's been some, like, I think uh, Deshaun Watson has, like, an injury problem with his shoulder. He got held out last week. He hasn't been practicing. So we might not even see Deshaun Watson in this game. Now, they've been playing their rookie uh, DTR, but I also have heard reports too from the Browns, uh, like some of the Browns social media sites, not the official ones, but some of the Browns social media sites is that they might be playing PJ Walker. So this game spells to me that the 49ers are are the best team in the NFL. And looking back at it now, when we versus the 49ers in week one, nobody can stop them, right? They are are right now, those guys in the Eagles, maybe the Chiefs, are Super Bowl players. Uh, bound champion. So 49ers are 5-0. Brock Purdy is lighting him on fire. He hasn't lost a game yet in the regular season. I was doubting him, but but I shouldn't have. And also, their team is awesome. Bren Ayuk, uh, Debo Samuels. They've got George Kittle, like good offensive line. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. Their, their team is freaking awesome. They beat the, uh, the Cowboys 42 to something else, right? So this game, I know it sounds crazy, and it's going to be a real quick prediction because I want to like, fly through this one. Right, this one to me is uh, 49ers. I know it sounds crazy. 49ers 49, right here. 49 to to Browns zero. 49 zero. I know it's jokingly like that. Look, of course the Browns are going to score points. Of course the the 49ers won't score 49 points. Maybe not, but it's kind of funny. I think that if they haven't got any Watson, I don't. Of course Nick Chubb's out. They've got to run the rock better better with their backups. If they haven't got that, you've got to rely on a rookie. I just think that of uh, the 49ers defense will feast. They've got Javon Hargrave. They've got the other bloke over there, uh, Bosa. You know what I'm saying? They've got that dude there. Like, they will feast. It doesn't matter where you're playing. And I think it's in Cleveland. So, there's going to be, and I've been looking through the comments too uh, for Cleveland Browns fans. Even they don't like this matchup. This is like, this is like n- not a trap game, but it's like San Francisco should win this game by 21 points. They should hammer the Browns and they will fall to uh, two and four. So, the Browns are in a bit of trouble. They paid all that money for their quarterback, $230 million. He's got injuries. I think he's been like sometimes even a healthy scratch. So he's he's out of it right now. They're going to go with their rookie DTR. So 49ers win 49-0 to zero over the Browns. Last game. Last game, we have a closer one that, that I, that I, I, I tell you what, Seattle versus Cincinnati. I didn't realize until looking up today because I'm trying to get myself more involved in NFL content because all I do is focus on Steelers. And I know I should look at other teams too, but I'm just so busy. That Seattle right now is three and one. I didn't realize that. So Seattle is three and one. If I go to their schedule, right? Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati versus Seattle and Cincinnati at home. So the only loss that came from Seattle Seahawks so far is the Rams week one when they lost 30 to 13. They then they then beat Detroit in overtime 31, 37, 31. They beat Carolina, who's now 0 and 5 in the season. 37-27. They beat New York Giants, who, look, back-to-back games aren't the best teams in the NFL. They beat them 24-3. They went on a bye, and now they're versing the Cincinnati Bengals at home. Also, good thing, too, all these games are at 1 p.m. or before 1 p.m. because the UK game is much before, right? So Cincinnati versus uh, Seahawks is my 4 a.m. I won't be waking up to it. I'm going to sleep through it all, wake up, and see what happens. But this game is also another 50-50. The Cincinnati Bengals are trying to bounce back. They did. They, they, they had Joe Burrow. He's been talking about his injuries. Been, he's been had his ankles. It's, get, it's getting better every week. Now, last week he, he linked up with um, uh, Jamar Chase for 190 yards. He had over 300 yards passing and three TDs. He's playing some good football, right? But the Bengals, they of course have lost. They lost the first two games, 24-3, 27-24 with Baltimore, 
and they, they won versus Rams 1916. They lost against Tennessee 27 3, and they beat Arizona, which Arizona isn't the best team, but Arizona went on to beat the Cowboys. But then 49ers beat the Cowboys. The NFL is everywhere. So 34 20 was, Ari, uh, was Arizona. They won. The Bengals are two and three. They're trying to get themselves out of that cellar dweller spot that they, they put themselves early in the season, right? So they needed that victory over Arizona. And now they verse Seattle. But I think Seattle is actually a tougher team than Arizona, right? And even maybe even maybe, even more tougher probably than Tennessee, right? Now, Seattle has on their roster, uh, Geno Smith, by the way. What a bounce back Geno Smith has had in his career. He was like a New York Jet for a while. And now he's like the, the guy in Seattle, the veteran guy in Seattle. Can still move, can still run around, uh, has good has good passing. He's got five TDs, one interception, over 846 yards, 6.9 average. He's getting the job done, right? So Geno Smith is doing th- good things out there. Uh, Kenneth Walker has 288, 283 yards, uh, five TDs. So they're running the rock, and they're getting the ball to DK Metcalf, Noel Fant, and the other bloke is uh, uh, Jason Smith and Jingba. They're trying to work him in. So this game to me, if I'm going to do a score prediction, which I have to because it's the AFC, AFC North rundown, and the Bengals are playing at home. Let's go a high-scoring game. This could be kind of crazy. Let's go 34 Seahawks to Bengals uh, 29. 34-29, right? Anyways, guys, that's the... Oh, my goodness. That's a long episode, right? Let me, guys, know if you do enjoy the long episodes because I just got on a bit of a rant and I try and cover as much uh, football as I can. But time ticks away as we go and go and go, right? So, but this week, to summarize everything, okay... I've got Tennessee winning that game in London. I've also got the, the for San Francisco 49ers beating the Browns, smashing them at home uh, to win going 6-0, and the, and the Browns fall to 2-4, and four, which is fantastic. And then I also have the Seattle Seahawks beating uh, the, the Cleveland, Cleveland Bengals. The Cleveland Bengals. I've got the Seattle Seahawks beating the Cincinnati Bengals at home as well. If all these things happen, if all these things happen, that Ravens lose, Bengals lose, Browns lose, the Steelers have a buy, have the best buy in history. No one is yelling out fire Canada. No one's yelling out Mike Tomlin, fire Tomlin. No one's yelling out fire Gunner. Gunner can't hurt us now, right? If this happens, then the Steelers sit in first place with all the other teams losing. That is the best result we can ever hope for, right? That's the best result we can ever hope for. Anyways, guys, that's kind of it today. Uh, that's the AFC North Rundown. Hope you enjoyed that. Put your, put your picks in. Do all that kind of stuff. Hit the like and the share. Do all that YouTube stuff. I'm gunning for, we want Tennessee to win. We want Seahawks to win. And we also want uh, San Francisco 49ers to win 49-0. I'll see you later.